This is Inside Badger Football with head coach Trey Shucker. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Wingfield Properties, Southern Bancorp, Southwest Sporting Goods, Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Trinity Temple Assembly of God, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson, and Kneebone CPA, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Group, R and T Dixon Enterprises, Ludwig's Bakery, the Law Offices of Gina White, Patterson Federal Credit Union, Batson Sides, Print Mania, Scott Bird DDS, Sexton Law Firm, Chad Kesterson Shelter Insurance, Chicken Express, Pediatrics Plus, and Providence Veterinary Care. The host of Inside Badger Football is Cooper Dar. Welcome back to Inside Badger Football. Joining me, as always, head coach Trey Shucker. How are you, coach? Doing great. Yes, Good sir. To be here today. Yes, sir. Well, we had a great week of football this past week. It's been we're kind of getting to the middle of conference ish yeah. now, and so uh, we're just enjoying some Friday night lights every single Friday. So I'm loving it. Uh, Fountain Lake. We played Fountain Lake this past week. Huge victory, 77 to zero. Uh, had a big game for the Badgers. Coach, let's just talk about it a little bit. We won't talk too much about it, but Coach, I want you to talk a little bit. What was the game plan kind of coming into the game and how did y'all just executed the game? Yeah, uh, the biggest point of emphasis this week was be the best team, uh, be the best that, that we could have been all season. You know, just to keep improving from week to week um, and play up to our standard. And that's what I thought we did Friday night. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, we were the best that we've been Friday night, and, and it showed on the field. And so I was really proud of our guys for going out and executing the way they did, um, the way that we coached them to do it. Um, you know, it wasn't a perfect game by any means, but, um, man, there was just a lot of plays being made, uh, both sides of the ball, all phases of the game. I uh, was able to score multiple times in special teams, and that's encouraging. Um, you know, just a, a really good performance overall. All right. Well, it was a great game to watch, great game to watch. I got to go back and watch it. And uh, Fountain Lake, they, they did some good things. Our, our Cadelphia Badgers also did amazing things as well. So good game to watch. I want to go ahead and go into the highlights. I don't want to hit too much on the game, but I want to talk about these highlights. Yeah. Uh, it's going into the quarters, starting off a great kickoff and then obviously a re-kick. Um, let's just talk about the beginning of the game right here. How important was this turnover uh, on this second kickoff right after this one? Yeah, I think it really just set the tone for the rest of the game. And, you know, we work our uh, – we do tackle takeaway uh, drill in practice. We, we work on punching the ball out. Um, and, you know, that's where you see what we do in practice, you know, get applied into an actual game situation. So that's always encouraging whenever uh, things that you work on in practice are translated over into the game. And so it gave our offense really good field position. Um, and we're able to go put points on the board pretty quick. Kind of still just looking at the highlights. Okay, defensively, obviously there were a lot of tackles for loss. There were yeah. a ton of huge plays that were made on Friday night. Talk about some of the guys that really just had a huge impact on this game. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like the same thing as last week. Our defensive front, our linebackers were so disruptive. It was really difficult for felt like to really get anything accomplished. Um, you know, they They've got a talented quarterback. They've got some talented receivers, but uh, we're just so disruptive that we were, they weren't able to get into a rhythm. Uh, we threw off their timing of a lot of things, and uh, our defense rallied and made, made big plays. Coach, we see a lot of huge plays, a lot of explosives yeah. offensively. Talk about how huge ox, uh, explosives are for offensive football, creating momentum in a mm -hmm. huge victory like this. Yeah, we were able to score pretty quick uh, from a lot of different you know, lengths of the field. Um, I thought one of the main things was our front, our offensive line, very consistent. I uh, thought that we did a really good job of uh, getting up to the second level and then winning the second level blocks. I thought our receivers did a really good job blocking on the perimeter as well. And that's something that you know was a big point of emphasis going into this week. Uh, blocking on the perimeter with the, with the skill guys. And, you know, that's something that we felt like we improved on from weeks past, and, and hopefully we can keep moving forward with. Coach, we're seeing a lot of tackles for loss. We're kind of moving from offense to defense all around. As we're looking at a special teams play right now, this is a huge play. 
right there. Mm. Big tackle by number 21. Let's talk about that tackle. That is a great form tackle. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, our headhunters unit is our is what we call our kickoff unit. Um, you know, we take very a lot of pride in how we cover down. Um, our guys get to top speed really, really well. And then, uh, as you saw, we got into our rush, our you know coverage lane, and uh, made a big, big play. That was Blake Moody on the on the tackle. He's our running back, but he also uh, was a really good athlete to to make a play. Coach, I want to talk about special teams just a little bit more. Seth Molinari, he mm -hmm. was 11 for 11 on PATs this game. 11 PATs just to even have an opportunity to do that is amazing for the team. Right. But Molinari going 11 for 11 on all PATs. Talk about that just a little bit. It, it's huge whenever you've got a kicker that uh, can go in and, you know, be perfect on the night. You know, he feels good about uh, the snap. It all starts with a snap with Casey Pye getting the ball back there very quickly uh, and then allowing Seth to have enough time to, to get the kick and feel comfortable about it. You know, Seth's done a really good job this season. He's, he's kicked a few field goals. Uh, he's kicked a 31 yarder this year. And, um, you know, he's just a, a guy that is, that we feel really good at the kicking position, you know, able to score points, uh, help us out in the special teams game. Also, I want to talk about, he had 12 kickoffs as well. And all in the same, like great position on the field and just to get the guys down there mm -hmm. uh, for the kickoff unit, as we're going to see right here. Great positioning on this kick. Yeah. Talk about how important that is for the game of football, uh, just to be able to position a kick like that and get your guys down there to it's make some plays. It's huge, just because it comes down to the field position. You know, see us punching punch the ball out again right there, mm -hmm. and, and we actually score that one. But uh, it's huge when it comes down to field position. Uh, and, you know, it all starts with the kick, uh, the kick. Uh, getting the ball down close to the to the end zone, and then our cover down unit is able to pin the returners deep, and then it puts our defense in good field position to make the offense go the full field, the full length of the field. Um, and it's very tough to do that against our defense that's so disruptive and tackles well. And then you know it'll ultimately create good field position for our offense. Um, you know, going back to that with. Our defense getting them off the field. We had a couple really big punt returns for touchdowns by Braden Wagner. Uh, I think we had one of them called back, but um, he was able to put two really nice returns together. You see it right here. Um, you know when you can when you can score in a punt return, man, that's so much momentum created. Obviously, you're putting points on the board, but it's just a, a big momentum deal, and uh, you know it's it just explosive. Really, really nice. Blake Moody right here, big run. Uh, it's nice having Blake back this week. Uh, and he's been out with, some, with an injury for the past couple weeks. He was able to get in and, and have some big runs. There's McCoy uh, scoring a touchdown right there. Sophomore quarterback, smart yep. quarterback. Uh, talk about how big of a leader he's been, even at the sophomore level. Yeah. He has been a huge leader for the Arkadelphia Badgers. So let's talk about that, Coach. Yeah, he was uh, seven for seven for four touchdowns awesome. in the first quarter. And uh, just really, really, he's progressed so much, you know, even since spring and summer um, and coming into the season, you know, he's progressed every week. Uh, you can really see him starting to settle in and, and feel comfortable. Um, you know, early in the season, we had to help him out with some th some throws and, and make things a little bit simple. And then we've been, we've been able to progress from that and uh, really start to string some really good you know, sequences together when it comes to play calls and, and drives. He's done a really good job at handling the load of, you know, the quarterback, the starting quarterback job. Uh, he's a talented arm. You know, a lot of things at that position are centered around everybody around him. You know, to be a good quarterback, you got to have a good front line that gives you time. Uh, you've got to ha have good running backs that are able to get first downs in, in situations, be explosive in the run game. And then you've got to have good playmakers out at the wide receiver positions. and. Uh, you know, he's got really good talent around him to be able to help out with all of that. You know what I'm liking? I'm, I'm, watching, I'm watching these highlights at the same time that everyone else is, and I'm really seeing a lot of people just making smart decisions. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen is there are a lot of opportunities. I've, I've been on that field before. Yeah. You know, you're running down the field. You really just want to knock somebody over sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's football. You can do right. that. So. But what I'm seeing is a lot of guys are just running in front, making the other guy just stop a little bit, not being uh, 
too, too physical where the, the flag would be thrown. That, that is huge with the coaches installing that into the players yeah. of just playing smart football. Talk about what smart football means to the Badgers. Yeah, it's huge. We, you know, we want to be disciplined. You know, I know that uh, there were some penalties in the game, but uh, we definitely, there was a lot of opportunities to, to retaliate. There was opportunities to maybe go extra on some plays and we, our kids chose not to. And uh, that's something that, you know, I like to take pride in with our team, you know, and it just shows the discipline. Um, are we perfect? No, no, no team is. But, um, you know, I thought our kids did a really good job over the course of the night backing down from some situations that probably could have been worse. Blake Moody on a huge run again right there. As you said, he's back this week uh, after a little thing going on. Uh, but... Also, a huge play right there. Yeah. Let's talk about number 25 a little bit. You know, this was the only uh, defensive turnover of the night. You know, Ethan yeah. Lewis, sophomore linebacker, uh, another kid that's just gotten progressively better. He's able to rotate in at the linebacker position. Um, and then, you know, the player that's running right now, Carson Brawley, sophomore linebacker, we were able to put him in at running back. Uh, in junior high, he was the starting running back, you know, rotated in with Caden Whitaker, another sophomore running back that we have. But, um, you know, the way it played out this year, Carson was able to – to work his way in into a rotating role at the middle linebacker spot. And then, you know, just the way the game played out, we were able to get him in at running back because he's not able to get a whole lot of reps at that spot. But uh, it was a good situation to get him in and let him run the ball and kind of get back into it with that. And he was able to put a really nice run together and score a touchdown. I love it. Well, Coach, I want to congratulate you on a huge win this week, obviously looking towards the next week. Uh, but I want to stay right here just for a little bit longer. Uh, we actually have an interview. Millie Babb got to sit down earlier this week with Kyle Reed. Uh, so let's go ahead and head over to Arkadelvia High School and hear this interview. Hello, I am here with Kyle Reed, a senior for the Arkadelvia Badgers. Kyle, how long have you been playing football and what do you like most about it? I've been playing since I was six years old. I say my favorite thing about it is just probably getting to play with my buddies growing up and us going to practice together, team camps, everything, just all the memories together, all the hard practices, times going out to the lake for football, having to run the dike out at DeGray, all that stuff. So I say just those memories mm -hmm. are my favorite part about football. What is your favorite part about Friday Night Lights at Badger Stadium? I'd have to say probably just winning, honestly, and seeing the crowd get hyped up, the coaches, all the players were all hyped up. That's definitely the best part by far. And then going out on the center and celebrating after the game, there's nothing like it. Kyle, what is your role on the field and how do you transfer that to off the field? I'd say on the field, you know, I'm always having to be a leader. I'm a senior, so I knew that I, last year I'd have to step up and lead these younger guys this year and just try to be a good positive influence towards them and be the best teammate I could be towards them, you know trying to get rid of all that negativity. And we do that off the field as well. We try to implement that into every aspect of our lives. So, you know, we, we're always trying to focus on better ourselves and uh, positivity and just doing what's right. Kyle, what is one goal your team set this season? And then personally, how can you help achieve that goal? Uh, well, a goal that all of us want this season, we've been wanting forever really, is to win state, of course. You know, I'd, I'd say that's our top goal this year. Well, we're going to take it one game at a time. But overall, we want to get to Little Rock where we belong and finally put a ring on our hands. Mm -hmm. But um, how I'm going to be doing that is um, trying to stay consistent in practice, watching film, things like that, just uh, making sure I stay on top of my stuff and be ready each week and just take things one week at a time. All right, Kyle, it's time for a pop quiz. All right. I'm going to ask you five questions, and you have to answer as soon as you think of it, all right? All right. What's your favorite color? Red. NFL team? Cowboys. <laughs> what is your go-to sonic order? Uh, chicken strips, fries, blue Powerade, and a pretzel. Pretzel. What is your pregame ritual? Well, I mean, usually I'm just sitting in my locker locked in with my headphones, but Something that I usually do before uh, we get ready to go down is I'm always in the green room stretching for like 20 minutes before the game, just trying to make sure I'm as loose as can be. And finally, what do you like to do outside of football? Really just ride around with my friends and just hang out, 
go to Walmart or something when we're bored. Yeah. I mean, not much to do, but we like to go out to the lake or something, just ride around, just chill. Awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. All right. Thank you so much, Millie, for that interview with Kyle. Um, he had some great things. I'm happy that he's also stretching yeah, before all the football games. we're glad games. that he's stretching. So, he's, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. He's ready to go. Well, we've seen him be very dominant in all of these football games that we've seen mm -hmm. past couple weeks. So great job on that interview. Uh, let's go ahead. I want to stay with this week a little bit more, Fountain Lake. I want to talk about the players of the week that we had this past week. And so let's go ahead and go to the offensive player of the week. First, Fountain Lake, Coach, let's talk right here. Offense player of the week is junior left guard Grant Rollins. Uh, just a huge night overall in the run and pass game. Had a lot of knockdown blocks, pancakes. Um, you know, he's really good, consistent in the pass game. Uh, it all started with the front line, and, and he was the main leader on there. That's awesome. Well, you mentioned pancakes. I saw him at Waffle House one day, and he was eating right. So <laughs> he was eating the pancakes. Congratulations, huh? Offensive Player of the Week, Grant. Let's go ahead and go to the defense. Let's yeah. talk about Nikeson a little bit. Yeah, Defensive Player of the Week is Nikeson Wimberley. He's a senior. Uh, defense tackle for us, uh, just super disruptive in the run and pass game Friday night. Uh, led in tackles, had uh, I think maybe six tackles for loss, six or seven tackles for a loss. Um, just a huge night by him. Uh, really encouraging to see, you know, two two guys on the lines winning offense and defense player of the, of the week. You know, offense line for the offense and then defensive line for the for the defense. And Keeson's one of those guys that he's tough to tackle or that's tough to nice. tough to block. Yeah, that's right. Well, I I mean I, I think I just saw on Twitter if I'm wrong I don't know but I think you just got a scholarship offer for a collegiate team. Yeah. So congratulations, yeah. uh, Nike Keeson. That's huge. That is a it's a big accomplishment for any Always player. Always is. In any, high anytime a kid can uh, further their education through sports, it's always a big deal. That's right. Well, an offensive lineman winning, the defensive lineman winning. Let's go ahead and let's go into special teams player of the week right here with Braden. Uh, Braden Wagner uh, was special teams player of the week this week. Had multiple uh, punt returns for touchdown. He also scooped and scored on on our kickoff unit, and so uh, he was able to score multiple times on on the special team side of things this week. And any time that we can create an explosive play or put points on the board, um, you know, it's huge for our overall team and, and the success of the night. And he was able to do that multiple times. That's right. Well, it's awesome. That probably could have went a lot of different ways. Yeah, that's right. You know? That's right. Getting to see Braden just play on the offensive side. I mean, he, he does it all. He does yeah. it all. And having him win the special teams player of the week is huge. Let's go ahead and move on to the Badger Spirit Award winner. Let's talk about Kristen. Yeah, Badger Spirit Award winner this week is Kristen Shacklin. Uh, she's our athletic trainer. Uh, we're very fortunate to have her with us. Um, you know, she does a great job at getting our kids back onto the field, evaluating them whenever they have an issue, but she's always there. Um, you know, people don't really realize the amount of time that athletic trainers spend, uh, not only during football season, but just throughout the year. And, you know, she brings a positive attitude every day. She's always great to our kids and, uh, you know, it's always looking out for them in their best interest. That's great. Well, let's go ahead and look at the results from this past week. Last Friday, obviously, Arkadelphia 77, Fountain Lake 0, uh, Malvern 52, Ashdown 7, Nashville 26, Box Site 13, Haskell Harmony Grove 55, Genoa Central 18. The 4A7 standings as they are right now, we have Arkadelphia and Ma uh, Malvern uh, sitting at 3-0 and in conference. Uh, we see the uh, the overall, um, obviously played in the preseason, um, two and one for Ashdown and Nashville, box site one and two, and then we see the rest of them right there. But let's go ahead and look at this next week of football with the 4A7 schedule, October 18th. This Friday, we have Malvern at box site, Nashville at uh, Ashdown, Fountain Lake at Genoa Central, and Haskell Harmony Grove home at Arkadelphia. Coach? Senior night, Haskell Harmony Grove is coming into town. Let, let's talk about that game just a little bit. How, how is the team feeling after a huge victory coming into Haskell Harmony Grove? Yeah, uh, we're confident, um, you know, we're healthy. And so that's always good whenever you're able to move on to the next week healthy and, and be ready to go. But anytime it's senior night at our place, you know, our kids are gonna be ready to play. They're gonna be fired up and excited. Uh, Haskell, you know, they do, do some things that we've gotta be prepared for. They're a run-based offense. and uh, they're downhill run, and so they're going to come right at us, and, and we've got to meet and exceed the, the physicality of the game. 
Coach, you mentioned senior night. Talk about mm -hmm. how important this game is for the seniors, for Arcadelphia, for the parents even. Yeah. I know this is – it's coming towards – Towards an end. I, yeah. I hate to say it, but yeah. uh, obviously we have a lot more football to sure. go postseason in conference. But it's, it's senior year. It's senior year. What is what is something that you would say to the seniors, kind of just as they're getting ready to play this this game against yeah. Haskell? Uh, you know, enjoy every minute of it yeah. um, because just you know we talk about post you know post regular season play, but you know once you get to that point, nothing's guaranteed to That's you. Right. Uh, nothing's really guaranteed to you to make it that far. I know we've done enough already to where we feel like we, we are making it to the playoffs. Um, but once you get there, nothing's guaranteed. And so, the, you know, I think we're reaching around 20 practices left for those wow. guys wow. In, in the entire season. So um, just to cherish every minute of it and, and, you know, every opportunity that you get, go full speed. I mean, it's, it, it goes by so quickly. I know we're talking about it right now, but uh, before long, we'll be talking about, you know, the last week of the regular season and into the playoffs. And, um, and it just goes by so fast for everybody. You That's know, right. I feel like uh, the last time that we were talking about just the season in general, uh, we were talking about like week zero, week one week. And yeah. now here we are going into a senior night. And so uh, just the, the football season goes by so fast. It really mm -hmm. does every year. Well, if I could leave anything with the seniors, I get to played two years ago in high school and last year in college and don't don't wish anything away because yeah. you won't get anything like this back ever again that's so right it's huge well uh 6 15 on friday 6 15 p.m uh, we'll start the senior night activities uh over at arcadelphia high school and then kickoff is at seven as normal mm -hmm. uh, if you can't make it to the game we encourage you to watch on arcadelphiabadgertv.com Come root on the Badgers in person or on the computer, on your phone, or anything you can do. Uh, but, yeah, senior night this week against Haskell Harmony Grove. Should be a great game. Come out and support the Badgers at 7 p.m. at home. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Inside Badger Football is brought to you by Bell Wealth Services, Welch Funeral Home, Wingfield Properties, Southern Bancorp, Southwest Sporting Goods, Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler, Taylor King Law, Trinity Temple Assembly of God, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles Thompson and Kneebone CPA, South Central Connect, Java Primo, Southwest Auto Group, R and T Dixon Enterprises, Ludwig's Bakery, the Law Offices of Gina White, Patterson Federal Credit Union, Batson Signs, Print Mania, Scott Bird DDS. Sexton Law Firm, Chad Kesterson Shelter Insurance, Chicken Express, Pediatrics Plus, and Providence Veterinary Care. Inside Badger Football is produced weekly by the Rogers Department of Communications at Washita Baptist University and the Washita Sports Digital Network.